So this is a very interesting, the cover of the book, you see a lotus here and a bird flying and there's the moon. And the lotus is an important symbol in Buddhism because it grows in mud. And yet when it comes out, it is completely pure. It's not stained by the mud. And this symbolizes that we are in a world of suffering. Okay? And um, so that's the mud. But we can become pure. We can be, become free from suffering, even though we're born within a world of suffering for now. And then this is the bird that is flying towards the city of enlightenment, the moon representing enlightenment. And the bird has two wings, so we need two, both wings to fly to become free from suffering, compassion and wisdom. I like to say that we teach modern Buddhism, uh, which is the title of uh, my teacher's, one of, his, one of his latest books. And modern Buddhism basically means that everyone is welcome here, uh, whether they're Buddhist or not, and that we try to give them uh, tools so that they uh, can use Buddhist teachings in their daily life and that it can help them to be more peaceful, more happy, and less stressed out in this modern world. So for me, the, teachers, the teachings come from uh, Geshe Kelsang Getzo, and he's um, really applied effort to present uh, all the Buddhist teachings in a modern way. So that's what I've been doing. That's what I was trained to do. And as I mentioned earlier, so that people can benefit from it, even though they're not Buddhist and all that. And, and he would say that his uh, knowledge of Buddhism comes from his teacher. His teacher um, was a disciple, actually. So all of the teachings uh, in this way come directly from Buddha. So how did the teachings change over time and how are they adopted into a modern life? Like the original teaching must be quite different from... Well, actually the, we can say it in, in maybe in two ways. The meaning is the same. That The meaning hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. The meaning hasn't changed. It's the presentation that changes. The essence of Buddhist teachings is still there. It's just that the spiritual guides, the teachers, adapted the presentation so that the local people could understand. So that can mean the language. <laughs> you know, not everybody speaks Sanskrit, which is how Buddha taught the teachings in Sanskrit. And also culturally, there are differences. So they would present the teachings so that the people could understand them with their mindset, their culture, their way of saying, and we'll get to that so it'll be clearer what that means. So the different lineages develop that way. And then uh, my teacher, you know, uh, he's 84 now, say uh, in the 1940s when he was a teenager learning Buddhism in Tibet, um, he lived in an area without running water, without cars, uh, without people with blonde hair, for example. He told us one time, first time he said, oh, people can have blonde hair, all of these things. So. The examples and the way he learned uh, was much different, but the meaning was the same. The reason they still work is because Buddha 2,600 years ago gave us teachings on how to control our mind. Mm -hmm. So 2,600 years ago, the human mind was a human mind and was still uncontrolled. Today, it's still uncontrolled. It just it's in a different context. It's in a modern world with many, many distractions, many, much, many stressors. But it's still a human mind. So when we practice, for example, taking and giving that it's called, taking on someone else's suffering and giving them happiness in a mental practice, okay, it's the same as someone would have done 2,600 years ago. It's just maybe they're not taking on the same suffering in the same context, but the mind is basically doing the same thing. The meaning stays, has to stay the same, but it could be different situation, different language, different yeah. time. Yeah. So what he would do now, like even in the, the second edition of modern Buddhism, he talks about our frustrations a lot in various books and how to deal with them. And he decided instead of saying the car breaking down, he used the example of the computer breaking down. And to show 
that when that happens, we have two problems, not one. Everybody's having a problem, my computer broke down. But you have two. One, you have your inner problem, your reaction to the computer breaking down, your mind, and the computer. You take the computer to the shop, you solve an external problem in an external way, and your internal problem, your reaction to this, your frustration, you train your mind. And so Geshe Kao saying, having lived with us in the West for 40 years now, knows the modern world and uses those examples because they reach us. Instead of speaking of yaks or buttermilk or, you know, all of the things that they, we don't know anything about in Tibet, you know. Uh, butter tea, I think it's called, I said buttermilk, but I think it's called butter tea. You know, products, uh, customs, uh, blonde haired people, everything is adapted to our world. People being busy, you know, how could he be busy in traffic when there were no cars? There were no cars when he was born. A very, we would say here, backward type village. So from that, and then knowing the modern world, he wrote books to help the modern world. Traditionally, Buddha would say, our mind is like a wild elephant. So a wild elephant can destroy, you know, a lot of things. And I realized recently, through something I'll explain, that I really didn't fully understand what that meant. Because we have an idea, a wild elephant, yeah, it can do a lot of damage. But back in India, 2,600 years ago, and an elephant would do a lot of damage. Matter of fact, the reason I realized is, it was on the news a couple of weeks ago, an elephant wreaked havoc in a, in a small village in India which is probably still very similar to how it was 2,600 years ago. So then it was easy for me to imagine huts made of, you know, earth, and all of their belongings, their food, their clothing inside that hut. You know, they don't need any heating or anything like that, so that's how they lived. So an elephant going through there destroys everything. Everything. Their livelihood, their living quarters, their food, their clothes. What do they do? So though, when Buddha said that to those people, they understood. They were really afraid of elephants. And so they could become afraid of their uncontrolled mind. And someone came here and told me, I forget exactly what, but she had heard a teaching elsewhere where the person had given a traditional teaching. It's about a mouse. I think someone was buying a mouse or something. And she said that. I didn't get it. You know, and we don't buy mouses anymore in that way. So there was some teaching behind that that she didn't understand. So that's what uh, Geshe Kelsang did. He modernized the examples. And the reason he did that is that it has an impact, that we truly understand deeply um, what Buddha is trying to tell us.